Okay, now we're off. Good. Yes, uh, I think I have to say congratulations on a very good uh, season. Wow, very good. Let's call it good. It's good. Let's it's, call it good. It's good. Yeah. I mean, we have a good uh, 49er FX team. They had one European title. Yes. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, but not super. Didn't do so well in the world, <laughs> but it's, it's still pretty good, I think. Yeah, they did okay. And you have a good Finn sailor who spins it up and down, but now uh, he... He dropped a little bit uh, yeah. after the first year. The second year of the quad is always a bit harder. Right. So, yeah. Go on. Then you have a good laser guy who has had a yeah, breakthrough, I think, this year. Yeah, breakthrough. He's developing um, nicely, and I think even the, 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 for me, which is almost as important, it's not just a fluke. Because his training partners right. are also climbing. He's working together with Carla Tupper and, and Rob Davis. Right. And all three of them have been climbing the ranks uh, in, the, in, the, in, after, in the last year. So for me, that's a very, very comfortable feeling. Like a, like a warm feeling that yeah. these guys... And Rob the Davis, work. that's the Norwegian-Canadian guy, right? Or Canadian-Norwegian, I don't know. What is, yeah. <laughs> talking about the same guy. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, so I think that is uh, pretty good. With laser radar for women, it's a bit fluky at the moment. Like, oh no, sorry, I'm in Norway, I cannot make too many uh, hashtag me too remarks. Mm -hmm. uh, the Olympic sailing in Norway is extremely vulnerable. Well, what? Vulnerable. Vulnerable, yeah. Because we have so few candidates. Well, let's put it like this. We now have more nations qualified for the Tokyo Games than Germany. Mm -hmm. And I think... Our team is like a fifth of, the size of our team is like a fifth of that team. Mm. And not even compare us with the French or with the English and things like that. So, mm. vulnerable. Mm. What I mean is, what that mean? If, if one, let's say that Thomas could stop sailing. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. And now we lost one of the FX teams. If the other one decides to do something else, then we have no FX teams. Yeah. But I, I mean, vulnerable in that, in, in that sense. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Um, if, if you're going to say what is the most positive thing for this last year? The most positive thing? Yeah. yeah. <sighs> well, there were quite a few uh, positive things. The most positive thing? To, to be honest, from my point of view, where I'm sitting, I think the most positive thing is that the Norwegian Sailing Federation after being in quite a bit of a deep financial problem, mm. they managed to get out of that, I think, even stronger than before. Um, and that's, that's my personal opinion, and I'm not just talking for the Norwegian sailing team as the sailing team, mm. but since it's, uh, uh, the Federation plays a very big part in, in how the wheelings and dealings around that team are going, mm. Um, I think um, we we uh, they kept working. The coaches and the staff kept kept focusing even more because we had to sort of deal with all sorts of cutbacks and and uh, try to make things even more uh, effective. And and that has has proven uh, to come out stronger. And and also here inside the office, it's not only that we have a new floor, but people are working more effective. And I think. That is, for me, again, the most important development. Mm -hmm. uh, relationships are getting better. People are doing more what they say and saying more what they're going to do. So credibility becomes uh, uh, something that is uh, it's something you can count on. And, and I, sti I still think we need to go a long way. But if there's something which I, uh, enjoys me most, um, let's say if you would ask me how things looked in January, <laughs> beginning of this year, and how things are now, damn, that's the difference. So it's management upheaval. Yeah, the management and, and the working with the board and the working with Olympia Toppen and uh, the internal structures here, um, so many ways of operating have been improving, mm. even though the, the, the economical support was quite sort of lousy in the beginning. Or during the year. But if I say that partly it has to do with the attitude of the sailors as well, that they are focusing more on training. 
Yeah, they, they, there's some of these uh, uh, golden speeches and quotes that says um, hey, the, the values of a team come from the uh, leadership. Um, they reflect leadership. The values of a team reflect leadership. Um, so I think if, if the leadership in the, in, in the organization has high values and reflects that and tries to radiate that to the bottom, everything comes up. Of course you need sailors that are willing to put in the work and are willing to work with these standards. But that's happening. If it's, if it's not up there, not with the older guard, not with the coaches, if they are making a mess of it, it will, it will radiate down. So, and I had to learn that also this year. So now you have a new training uh, structure. You have... Uh, the structure is still the same. The, the, yeah. structure is the same, but the, the, peop the people are different. I There's mean, one new person, yeah. For Espen is now uh, uh, coaching uh, Anders. Yeah, he will. He, uh, Espen has a, a freelance agreement with us to coach only Anders for an X amount of days. Okay. And Pierre, what's he going to do? Pierre is uh, going to be our, uh, how do you say that, NSF youth coach, um, Marta Enger Eider. I'm not sure if you know her. I know her. Yeah, she was in, the, let's say, she was the youth coordinator. And uh, we felt that, that the, in too many directions she did a good job, but into the direction of being on the water, being with the sailors, radiating uh, 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 all sorts of signals that we are interested to the clubs and to the sailors. That was very difficult for her, also because she had all sorts of, um, how do you say that, obligations to her studies, so that was physically impossible to do that as much, and that was what we needed most. So, so she's out now of the federation? She, uh, her contract was for one year, okay. so that has ended. Okay. Um, and Pierre is going to, uh, in a new structure, mm. together with uh, PC and me, we are mm. going to do the management part of that project. And uh, Pierre is going to do the on-water towards the community mm. kind of jobs. And who is going to do the 49ers? The 49ers? Yeah. They are not on our sort of priority list. Not the not the not the, the FX. Oh yeah, that's going to be Thomas Gutthomson. That's Thomas. But Gutthomson. that's like. But so he's going to be responsible for this one team from Transberg. No, Thomas will also have uh, responsibilities to uh, some other projects, in and around the Olympia Norwegian sailing team. Okay. So we have um, uh, uh, like the Matisen brothers, yeah. uh, and then we have a new training group coming up mm. uh, with Alexander Klippenberg and Jeppe, Jeppe Nielsen. Right. Uh, we hope to get some of the 29 kids to interested. We call that uh, the, the Project Reeser, um, together with Mons Hallström and Thomas. They are going to be responsible for getting these young 29 kids, beginner 49 grips in A niner. So that's why I was a little bit like a hey, niner. Um, in A niner and see if they can do some introductionary training, uh, getting to know the Niner, and maybe even participate at the Youth Worlds in Reeser. Okay. So that's that's uh, the plan. So we're going to make uh, the work there. So Thomas's work is not only one FX girls team, he oh. has to do more responsibilities in the SCIF uh, area. Okay. And then for the lasers, you have Thomas, Gar er, not Thomas, but Garot. Anton. Anton Garot. Yeah. Yeah, the old guy. He's doing both radar and and uh, no. standard. Uh, he's basically responsible for the standard program. He is overseeing the uh, radio program, but uh, as the experiences with the uh, Danish team for Lena were so good, we uh, on her wish we uh, made up a new deal for a new year so that she can work with Annemarie Ringdom and her coach uh, Piotr Wojewski okay. next year okay. in that training group. Are there some other laser sailors that are going up into her uh, group or uh, no. it's only her at the moment? It's only her. So these other young girls that are coming there? They will, the we will, we, uh, the, the, there is, ident we identified a new group of sailors right. in the uh, how you call it? Um, in the laser class, in the niner class, and in the uh, surfing class. 
we had some huge uh, results last year in the Niner class, or the 29er class. We had some huge results in the Laser class. We identified this group and we formed an Oud for the Landtag training group. I, I can show you a, a bit of a diagram that okay. actually shows you the structure on how it's going to yeah. Then we have two levels in the Uitvoerder uh, Landslag. One, of course, are the challengers for Olympia Landslag. Mm -hmm. Maybe, 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 maybe super, maybe with a very long shot to participate in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. Let me be clear, participate. Mm -hmm. And then we have the road to Paris. We call that the Uitvoerder Landslag training groups. Mm -hmm. The names are horrible. Mm -hmm. uh, Especially Pierre Moberg is very <laughs> aggressive on that one. Get mm. some other names. Mm. So, but that's that's it. And then we're going to have Olympia Landslag probably with two uh, levels. One will be the ones on par for medals, and the other one maybe for a possible uh, uh, participation. Okay. Th that is the structure how we're going to work. And the the, guy, the kids that we talked about, like Carolina Rosmo, uh, uh, Uwe Thomas Gard, uh, Matthias Verte, and things like that. That's all this level. Right. Good for the Landslag training group. Right. And we call that the road to Paris. Yeah. But you say possible participation in in uh, Tokyo. Yeah. That could be the Matisse brothers and some others. Yeah. Right. So the people that you are well, really... It could basically be everybody. Yeah. Basically, the, the people that you are uh, uh, counting on for uh, Tokyo is Line, Hermann, the FX, 49 FX, and and Anders. Well, I'm not counting on. I'm, a, I'm but but I'm, but, but, I'm but those are the prime candidates for the. Uh, they are. The, they in my book, they are on par. They're on par. Right. They're on par. Right. But they can still fuck it up. But yeah, of course. What about the board, the windsurfers? There's only one person who uh, is sort of close. Hey, for on for a. Here you go, close to 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 par, right. and, and but he's still under. <laughs> that's that's Sebastian. That's it. That's and and let's be honest. I mean, due to the gender policies inside world sailing, he actually managed to qualify the nation. Mm. Uh, but that same gender policy mm. uh, costed uh, Anners any opportunity to qualify the nation, even right. though he was he's a terrific sailor. Right. So thank you, world sailing. Yeah, yeah. Gender policies. Yeah. Are you thinking about the uh, double-handed uh, ocean racing team no. uh, for Paris at all? No. Not at all. No. I mean, uh, I'm not, you must have seen the last uh, yes. publications yes. on that vote. Yeah. Um, let's put it: the credibility of world sailing is uh, low. Mm. And I'm trying to be nice now. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it's it's horrendous. Mm. It's, uh, I mean, I'm not saying that I believe all the articles in the world, mm -hmm. but also um, during uh, events like in Aarhus and, and World Cups and test events and, and that kind of stuff, um, there is a, how you call it, a tendency of uh, swallow it and, and, and we know better kind of attitude from mm -hmm. world sailing. And that's not very respectful and I do not think that um, they are uh, sort of in a position where they can actually uh, demand that from us. Mm -hmm. and, and us is basically the sports directors uh, caring about Olympic teams. Um, and uh, that, that's, that's a very dear, difficult thing. I think one of the positive news that came out of the November meeting was actually the fact that they, for some of the expert committees inside World Sailing, they're going to cut away an extra layer of ratification. Um, and that, I think, could end up in a positive development where, uh, let's say, a proposal from a rules committee or an equipment committee or an events committee actually gets only through the council and is not being uh, ratified or does not need to be ratified by the AGM. And that's at least keeping it away uh, out of the hand of the, let's say, poor sung politicians. Mm. And that might actually uh, 
make up for a lot of lost time and mm. energy mm. In, in the development of sailing mm. as a, mm. let's say, worldwide phenomenon. Mm. Mm. But right now, I'm not very impressed from world sailing. So the double-handed class or whatever class it's going to be, or discipline, yeah. I have no clue. And I'm not going to waste much more than an entertaining talk about that. Mm. Okay, but that's interesting because I have, I'm aware of the voting problems uh, and uh, it doesn't look too good at the moment. But I know that there is a serious uh, contender to organize a world championship in that class for 2019 or 2020. So it's, uh, things are happening besides world sailing. Yeah, of course. Uh, one of the, the, my highlights right now in the sailing world is the Sail GP. Hmm. I'm looking forward to that more than a New America's Cup. To be yeah, honest. yeah. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. There, everybody has its uh, its little things. I'm I'm trying to get into the next year as good as we can <laughs> because mm -hmm. next year is going to be hell. Are you uh, looking at the Norwegian America's Cup effort? Yeah, from from a distance. Mm -hmm. I also seen that uh, Simeon uh, yeah. Team Pond is actually pulling one off in in Holland. And uh, just imagine, I coached Simeon when he started out on uh, as a rookie on uh, on Volvo, and mm. I, I coached him. Mm. And, I, and when even when he was at the America's Cup, I made his fitness program. So mm. <laughs> mm. That I, I I follow that as well. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but it would be great if we can get something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll have to see it before. Well, we have to see it before. I believe. I believe it. Of course. I'm skeptic. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a skeptic. Uh, but you're happy with the situation here? You, the, no, I'm seeing positive development. Mm. I'm not happy at all. No. I'm never happy. What is going to make you happy? A medal. A medal in the Olympics? Yes. Or two. Yes. It's possible? Yeah. It's very possible. Otherwise I wouldn't be sitting here. I wouldn't mm. be putting in all that effort. Mm. It's possible. We have some very, very good sailors. They still need a lot to learn. Mm. And I hope we have time enough to learn them that. Mm. We have the staff mm. to learn them that. Mm. But it's it's just a matter of develop. People can only go so fast. Mm. And and uh, but we're 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 moving, and we have a really really good setup. Mm. But we uh, we're not there yet. What is what are Her Herman's Hermann's plans for this uh, winter? What is he for this winter? Yeah. Um, I have to, so he is uh, working a lot into handling right now. He's in Villamura uh, today, or actually the last couple of days he has a bit days off. Um, uh, so he's he's uh, working into handling a lot. Uh, bottom marks rounding, I think, was was some of his uh, more technical focuses. Uh, still on uh, pumping and juries and judges and things like that, because that was in the beginning of the year a bit of a Tricky, uh, tricky issue, but uh, they worked on that with some international judges, and that uh, proved wrong. But it's a never-ending story. Um, so yeah, they are uh, they're out there. They have tried some cooperations with other training partners uh, to get some extra input there. They had uh, Christian Ruth actually went down as an expert for I think about four or five days. So yeah, these uh, they are working. And uh, FX are working, uh, the Finn is working, uh, Lean is in Perth. So I think, except for one team that's supposed to go in three days, they're all on the job, except me. Well, I'm here. You, you are on the job all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, not all the time. But I didn't mention the NACRA 17. That's an yeah. odd case. It is an odd case, but it's a, it, like it's a, it's a how you call it? It's, it's a development class, mm -hmm. and and since Norway doesn't have any tradition or not a big tradition compared to many other countries, it's it will take a long time to build something up, and and uh, we still have two boats there, um, and and I hope that uh, that that we can sort of take a long breath. Uh, building that because I do believe that that catamaran sailing can absolutely be an a, an, an interesting and and let's say beautiful sport for Norway as well to to sort of uh, in, in increase the sailing opportunities. Matthias is he in good shape now? Is his no, shoulder he is okay? Still in the final phases of his recovery. Okay, when is he going to be able to sail? 
He is sailing right now. Okay. But uh, in and let's say I call it in a recovery phase. I mm. think depending on how it, how what will happen on the next let's say couple of well, weeks, uh, I hope we may even say see him in Miami already racing. But as far as I understood, his plans are to start racing, let's say full on. Uh, in every condition, no limits, uh, Palma. Okay. And Tyril, she's uh, fully in on that? Yeah. So she's not going back to the glacier? No. <laughs> mm. No, that's not going to happen. No. No, 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 no. I had uh, intake meetings with all the teams and, and they are all sort of full on. Mm. That goes with the other NACRA team as well? Martina Nicholas, yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Actually, I think... Um, after Herman, uh, they were on the water practicing first mm. after Arthur. Right. Yeah, they have been the most. Uh, oh, sorry, after Enoshima. Right. They didn't go to Enoshima, but mm. they went to Shanghai mm. and like they took a couple of weeks off. Then we had Wasser, and then after Wasser, they were straight in the boat mm. in Moss. Mm. Because they have been on their own pretty much. No, I last year I coached them, I think, about. 60 days or something. Oh, that much? Yeah, somebody has mm. to do it. Mm. Um, but uh, the two boats, uh, so it was some part of it, they were together, some part uh, they were with, uh, the, the two boats were together, some mm. parts they were alone. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I, I was in Menemblik, I was in Kiel, I was at the Europeans, and then Argus, so, yeah, a couple of trainings before hours. It's a nice boat. So that means that uh, you are also hands-on uh, on certain aspects. And yeah. you will follow the NACRAS or...? Um, well, we are still sort of puzzling how to prioritize next year. Um, of course, eh, the, the obvious candidates will are clear. I mean, there's, the, the, the problem is not to find out uh, the good ones or the bad ones, but it's always how to deal with the people in the middle. Mm. Uh, I, I like to work with, with people that still need to, to be built. Mm. Um, so I'm, for myself, I'm thinking that uh, together with, with Lars Lunigan, he is uh, still going to be our jumper like he, like he was last year. Um, what we basically did is ask the, the, the big classes like uh, the laser, the, the fin and uh, the FX, okay, when do you absolutely need an expert on, uh, like Lars? And they said, okay, there, 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 there. So that's going to be the, the priority for Lars. But then I still have hopefully uh, an X amount of days that I can also use Lars. And then I'm going to see, okay, how is the X R6 going? How is that going? So then I fill Lars's days. And then I'm going to see, okay, maybe I should do also a little bit of uh, R6 coaching with Sebastian. Maybe I will do a bit of work with the 49er girls when Thomas is sort of busy with other stuff. Maybe I will still do some NACRA coaching. So I'll be jumper number two, basically. Mm. Uh, so yes, I will be hands-on mm. uh, more than ever. Is the Federation financially strong enough to give these sailors uh, the resources that they need? No. How much do they lack? How much do they lack? I have another way. I had a meeting with Olympia Toppen, um, uh, preparing all the, the projects and the budgets. Um, and at one point they asked me, okay, how, from, uh, let's say, a complete, how much does an, um, an Olympic campaign cost per person per year? And that's a common knowledge, that's 35, no, 350,000 kroner per year per person. And that's accommodation. That's without the coaching. How much is the federation paying on that one? That's around 15%. 15? 15, 15, one five. Um, when I told that to Olympia Toppen, they looked at each other, and I'm talking about Marit and, uh, and Tore, they looked at each other and they said, oh, we sort of need to rethink now. Because, I mean, they are used to, for, to work with federations that have a team or a group of athletes that do not need to pay for their skis, their shoes, their jackets and their, their, their glasses. Um, for us that's a bit different. 
Um, and uh, so, yeah, that's that's uh, the reality. And um, uh, hopefully, and that's one of the the long term goals that I see for myself as a, as as a as a federation sport director, that uh, we will be able, let's say, in 2024, to have. Um, at least the Olympia A or the Olympia Landslag sailors to be, let's say, financially neutral on their campaigns. Um, so that and and with the help of sponsorship and things like that. If I would go right now and look, for instance, at Germany, I can say that about 90% of the B squad, so not the A squad, just the B squad, and remember that it's five times more people than we have in our squad. Um, are already financially neutral, yeah. And the A squads are actually making money out of the squads, mm-hmm. out of their mm-hmm. their their sailing. And if you look at France and England and a few yeah, but I mean that you have to sort of, if you compare those numbers, you also need to have a bit of an idea of the background. In Norway, to say I'm going to become a professional sailor, you will be an outcast. <laughs> you will not be taken. When are you going to get a job? Um, not even the the the, the career um, supporters from from uh, Olympia Toppen are considering uh, a professional career as a sailor uh, to be existent. Um, so, and in England, that's a very good option. People are choosing an Olympic career in order to become a professional sailor, mm. and that's a respected job. Um, same in France, same in Spain, same in Australia, same in the States, same in New Zealand. Mm. That's not the case in in, in, in Norway, mm. that's not the case in Germany. Um, so, yeah, keep that in mind. Is your ambition to change this? Uh, no, like I said, yes. I mean, if, if um, a Norse team is actually coming off and uh, we find... Uh, and I'm pretty convinced that the tendency becomes bigger. If we find that people from the Norwegian sailing team are um, sort of willing to to participate in a project like that, I will definitely support it in, in sign that to seeing to find out whether that happens or not. Because because uh, I think it, for me personally, um, a, a professional sailor is just a global citizen. If you want to be a professional sailor or a professional coach just in Norway, it's not going to work. But if you think globally, it's not that difficult. But is it any Norwegian sailor who would be qualified for an America's Cup team today? Yeah. There are. Yeah. Mm. Uh, to, to be honest, I think that, that uh, my, my Olympic sailors are better sailors than 90% of the big boat sailors. Mm. Because they know what to how to run a campaign and mm. how to get better in a class mm. without mm. all sorts of investments of money and tricks mm. and boat building shit. Right. And in the and you can see that also on the the the, the, the all the big campaigns, the sail GPs, the America's campaigns. All those guys are not coming from the old old school displacement <laughs> boat stuff. No, they come from from classes where where skiff and foiling is is already happening. Mm. So a Matthias, I mean, hey, you can, <laughs> or a Nicholas, or a Martina, or or a Tyrell, but also Anners and and um, and and the FX girls, they are sort of learning to operate at such a high level that in whatever class they will jump, they will develop much faster than than most of the people that are used to improve equipment mm. instead of improving their skills. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. I'll, I'll finish up by now, but but what do you think about this Star Sailing Sailors League? Star Sailors League? Yeah. Great. Right. Perfect. Yeah. It's it's a good demonstration of historical sailing. Mm. Better than the Olympics? No. No, not by far. <laughs> no, 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 no. I give me the Bacardi Cup. One of the very interesting facts of the Bacardi Cup uh, that's in Miami. Uh, I think um, you know, is that during every Bacardi but there's an average visit from a um, ambulance taking care of people that have a stroke or a heart seizure. Mm-hmm. Not so much because they are using drugs and things like that, but mostly because they are alkalized and too fat and get a heart attack during sailing. Mm. 
great. Perfect for <laughs> their overweight. <laughs> but when you look at the present uh, uh, regatta in in uh, yeah, but you can Bahamas. put that you can put that on the on the on the the, the, the same thing as the extreme 40s or the M32s or. Uh, what is it? The Cell GP, all the exotic circuits. Mm. The only the boat is different, mm. but the concept is the same. Mm. Great sponsors, some high names. It's a nice looking boat, but a nice looking boat depends on its taste. Mm. I think the star looks great, but it's it's yeah far away from Olympic sailing. Olympic sailing is like six years in a row, 210 days on a boat. But but are you saying that uh, Star, which is a keel boat, should be out of the Olympics because of that, or no? Well, let's put it like this. If again, if it's my personal opinion, yes, um, I think an Olympic should should reflect the, the 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 latest sort of where is the sport at this time and 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 and, and, and age, this day and age. If you go back to the 70s, we just started to understand that there was more than displacement sailing. The actually the boats were occasionally surfing. And then the 470 came. And then oh a catamaran. Who? So that's that's where we were then. And then uh, we had the big breakthrough with the uh, with the skiffs. Well, we were planing up with we were planing all the time. That was phew. And you know there were quite a few people that actually died when this skiff sailing came. I know at least two sailors that died when that skiff sailing came. Yeah, and the typical skiff sailing is the upwind, apparent wind sailing, downwind and stuff like that. What did they die? Because they had a heart attack? No, they didn't. They died because they were... Uh, one, of them, one of them was actually um, hooked to the boat capsized and he was mm. hooked mm. underneath mm. and couldn't come out and the other one was injured on the head and, mm. and things like that. Mm. Mm. Um, and and now <laughs> when the foiling comes, mm. uh, okay, let's forget a bit about Bart Simpson uh, and uh, that accident. Mm. But uh, in the Olympic level, we only have some cuts. Mm. Nobody died yet, fortunately. Mm. We only had some cuts. Mm. Nobody died yet. Mm. But we are going through another roof of mm. development. I mean, now we have foiling into the Olympics. Mm. So what I'm saying is that, yes, um, even... Even though I want to be very conservative in changing Olympic classes, um, I very much like to sort of have the Olympics reflect the different disciplines and, uh, in the sport. So there should be displacement sailing, there should be uh, skiff sailing, there should be foiling, long distance sailing. Why not let's have the finish of the Volvo Ocean Race? At the last day of the medal, uh, medal uh, of, the, of the, the the medal racing block in uh, the Olympics, have the Volvo finish there. Mm -hmm. But that is just to add publicity, or no, no. That, I mean, then the Olympics become the true mm -hmm. thing, like the reflection of the sport. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you, mean you can win an Olympic gold medal in Volvo Ocean Race. Why not? Mm -hmm. Well, at least it's long distance sailing. Mm -hmm. We're trying to mix up things. Maybe we should be even more saying, what, what kind of three forms do we have? We have round the cans, we have long distance, and we have, uh, what do you call it, one-on-one, um, -on -one, America's Cup, mm -hmm. like match racing. Match racing. So why not have the finals of the America's Cup, the final leg of the Volvo Ocean Race, and a couple of Olympic round the can classes. Boom. Mm -hmm. That is the highlight of mm -hmm. the pinnacle of our sport. Mm -hmm. Like it would be for handball. Yeah. Yeah, would, would be would be wonderful. It's uh, very refreshing thoughts. <laughs> very, very interesting. Well, it's it's not refreshing. Actually, we thought about that when we were when I was still in Holland. That's where we came up with that kind of jokes. But um, yeah, it's not going to happen. It's too much in uh, co conflict of interest in too many. I mean, the Volvo will not give up the exclusive rights to to determine what happens when what works best for the big companies that are sponsoring that. Mm. And same with the America's Cup and, and the Olympics are at. IOC is also like a little company more afraid of the X Games than than anything else. So